What's up guys, Mike here, back with another video, something different today. Normally you just see me in front of the computer talking in my usual boring, monotonous voice that never really has any enthusiasm and always just kind of remains flat. Well, today we're going with something different. I'm actually really excited to do this video, more excited than I normally am to do videos because I want to try something different. We're talking about the NBA, but we're not going to talk about the finals. We're not even going to talk about the playoffs. The NBA playoffs have been really predictable and kind of boring to watch, to be honest. It's been really dry. And we all knew that it was going to be Golden State and Cleveland, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. This upcoming NBA draft looks to be one of the most stacked in recent memory. And with that, there's also a lot of teams that are stuck in no man's land. Or as I like to call it, Atlanta Hawks syndrome. You know, you make the playoffs, you might win a round... You might even make it to a conference final every here and there, but you're not going any further than that. You're kind of, um, well, you're stuck. And we're going to help three teams get unstuck. We're talking about three teams that need to blow it up and start the rebuild. Without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Number one, the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers are in a weird spot going into the 2017 NBA Draft. They have a young player who may break out and become a potential all-star this year, Miles Turner. Turner is another example of today's modern NBA center, a multifaceted scorer at the 5, who has a jump shot and is above-average rebounder after posting nearly 8 rebounds a game in his sophomore year. Also in his sophomore year, he posted a PER of 18.5, and all signs point to him being a potential franchise player if his development continues. However, the Pacers also have Paul George, who at 27 is entering his prime and, to be fair, deserves better than being on a team that fights for an 8 seed. That being said, guys, I think the one thing that's holding back the Pacers from a full rebuild is blatantly obvious. Step one, trade Paul George. What? George may be a free agent in 2018. It is being reported that he's already thinking about his Lakers legacy, making a trade even more obvious. Pacers would be crazy to keep him at this point and then lose him next year for nothing. The Lakers want Paul George. Paul George wants to go back to LA. The writing is on the wall and there's no sense in waiting anymore. The draft is the perfect time to make a deal. So I know what you're thinking. King Kraken, you sexy beast, you. What would the Pacers get for Paul George? Well, let's say that they do trade him to the Lakers, because the Lakers seem to make the most sense at this point. They could be asking for a package that includes any of the following players that I thought of. Julius Randle, Jordan Clarkson, D'Angelo Russell, Brandon Ingram, and the number two pick, which could possibly be Markel Fultz or Lonzo Ball at this point. Let's say the package is the number two pick, Ingram and Clarkson for George. Now, I did this trade using the NBA trade machine on ESPN. Now, yes, that is not exactly the best uh, tool to use, but it was more so just to make sure that the PERs were kind of, you know, fair and that the salaries matched. It was the easiest way for me to do it. So let's say, again, package of um, the pick, Ingram, and Clarkson for Paul George. LA gets the superstar they want in George, who can potentially turn their franchise around, get them back into a playoff position, maybe turn that team with D'Angelo Russell at point guard and take them from one of the worst teams in the NBA to potentially a mid-seed you know, in, the, in the Western playoffs. What does Indiana get from that? They get Lonzo Ball or Markel Fultz, both of which could be franchise point guards. They also get Jordan Clarkson, who could be a shooting guard or a sixth man for them, and then last year's number two pick as well. I think both teams come out of this in a very positive light. Now, obviously, if they're going to do this, that means that Jeff Teague would no longer be a part of the team. He is a free agent, after all, and he really doesn't fit what a rebuilding team would want. He's probably, again, in win-now mode. He wants to actually be a contender. And the rest of that roster for Indiana is really bad. Players like Rodney Stuckey, uh, who is a free agent, um, a shoot-first player who can't shoot. That's not exactly something that can be part of a winning formula in the NBA, so we're going to assume that he doesn't come back either. And then there's always the glaring you know, uh, black hole in Monte Ellis. Again, similar to Rodney Stuckey, one of the least efficient players in the NBA, and he's still under contract, so you're going to have to try to find a way to move him. Even if it's for a second round pick, it beats paying Monte Ellis $11 million to suck. As for Thaddeus Young, he is definitely a player that really 
is more of a team first player, he would probably be okay with being in the situation that he's in. It definitely beats where he came from, from being a Brooklyn net. Now, let's say that all this goes through. Take a look at what the starting lineup would be. At the five, Miles Turner, who, as I have said, is a potential franchise player in the making. At the four, you've got Thaddeus Young, who's your modern stretch four in the NBA. Small forward, you've got Brandon Ingram going into his sophomore season. Lights of LA no longer shining bright on him, and instead he can kind of come into his own in Indiana and uh, not have uh, all, as much pressure as you would expect uh, in as a Laker. At the two, Jordan Clarkson, who has proven in his career that he is a very capable spot starter, and at the point guard, be it Markel Fultz or Lonzo Ball, a potential franchise point guard. Not a bad haul after all. Number two, the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls are an easy case. Even though they almost and likely should have beat the Celtics in the first round, this team is in no position to contend in the next few years while Jimmy Butler is under contract. Much like Paul George, this can only mean one thing. Blow it up. Listen, Fred Hoiberg is not a good coach, and the team doesn't respect him, and the Garpax front office is a joke. Not a Sacramento Kings level of a joke, but a joke nonetheless. Just kidding, Kings fans, you know I love you. They failed to make a deal at last year's draft. Granted, Jimmy Butler is worth more than Zach Levine and Chris Dunn. So hopefully the front office realizes just how loaded this 2017 draft is expected to be, and that one of the prime candidates for a trade, the Boston Celtics, holds the number one pick in the entire draft. Butler for a package of the number one pick, as well as perhaps Avery Bradley, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart, let's say. Not only closes the gap for the Celtics between themselves and the Cavs, but sets the Bulls up both offensively and defensively for the future. Bradley is a player that has developed a new aspect of his game every year he's been in the league and could easily have a breakout year this year. He's already an elite defender, if he puts it together offensively, we could have a gem. Jalen Brown emerged during the playoffs, and Marcus Smart, much like Bradley, is a defensive-minded player who's learning how to shoot finally. Best of all, Bradley is the elder statesman of the three at only 26 years old. Smart is 23, and Brown is 20. The potential is there for all three to continue their growth. As well, adding on top, Markel Fultz or Alonzo Ball? Sign me up in a minute. Rondo can be dealt for another first round pick based on the grounds of how crucial he was to the Bulls in the first two games of the, of the Celtics series. Dwayne Wade could always opt out or retire, he has the option to, and the rebuild could pay off big time in the future for the Bulls. It's strange to see just how far the Bulls have fallen in such a short time. The front office is just completely inept. Like I said, not uh, Sacramento Kings level of inept. Like I said, sorry Sacramento fans, I'm just going to keep railing that one home. But they're really, really, really bad at their jobs. Fred Hoiberg does not belong in the, as an NBA coach. And there are better coaching options available. To name off the top of my head, Ime Udoka from the Spurs, uh, Nick Nurse from the Raptors, there's also um, Darvin Ham from the Hawks. I'm sure there's more that I'm missing, and all would be a clear upgrade over Fred Hoiberg, and as well as the GM options, you just you need to start fresh, Chicago. Just start it all over. It's going to suck because you're going to be in a really bad position for a couple of years, but it's worth it. Don't punish Jimmy anymore. Number three, the LA Clippers. Listen, the Clippers' big three has been together for six years, and J.J. Redick has been there since 2013. And yet, despite all that talent, they've still never made it out of the second round. In addition, they're coming off a year where they lost in seven games to the Jazz in round one. It's becoming abundantly clear that it's time to just cut ties and try again in L.A. Chris Paul is arguably one of the best point guards of all time. He's also a free agent this year, and while he was the driving force behind rewarding players with bigger potential salaries for staying with their teams, he still never made it to a conference final in his career, and he deserves better. I'm pretty sure if he had the choice to take $60 million less, which is what he would be risking, to potentially get a ring, Chris Paul may change his mind. At 32 years old, he may not have a lot of time left, and the man deserves better than second-round exits every year. Let him walk. In addition, Blake Griffin also has an early termination option, and he's obviously going to use it to get his big payday. He's earned it, and if CP3 leaves, Blake is gone. JJ Redick, on the other hand, wants a ridiculous amount of money for a three-point specialist who is utterly useless on defense. Exit stage right, JJ Redick. That leaves DeAndre Jordan, who is a free agent in 2018. If the other three leave, 
he's not going to stick around in 2018, and the Clips don't have a first rounder this year, that can all change with a DeAndre Jordan trade. While the Clips may not have the balls to actually do this, it's becoming abundantly clear that with the core coach Doc Rivers and GM Doc Rivers, it's never going to pan out, and it's better to start over than to be stuck in NBA purgatory until CP3 retires. So there you have it, guys. Three teams that I believe should blow it up and start the rebuild. Did I miss any other teams? Let me know down below. As always, guys, like, comment. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, you guys know how I feel about you guys. I do this for you. This is not for my own amusement. This is because I love to do stuff for you. I like to get you guys involved. Um, as always, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell another friend, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.